Aye, aye. Aye. I'm here at home. Underneath this beautiful mango tree, which is uh, giving me so many fruits. And I'm carrying an instrument, which is giving me many fruits. The way you play it, the instrument always sings its name. Yeah, it's still saying its name. If you play the rhythm properly, the instrument always praises itself. Abenya Titi is a very, very unique instrument. I've traveled around and I've not seen anywhere where they play uh, Nyatiti. The Nyatiti is a lyre, originating from the Luo people in Western Kenya. We call her the Queen of the Clan. In 2017, Singing Well set out to explore the Nyatiti to meet its players, both old and new. Yes, Nyatiti, Nyatiti is a special instrument. It's not just an instrument. We wanted to understand how the Nyatiti has evolved in the 21st century. But to look forward, we needed to look back. Seeing how the Nyatiti is made teaches you a lot about the Luo themselves. The strings, we Jaluo, we are fishermen. So, we made an instrument from fishing wire. Its resonator is built from fig and oak trees, some of the strongest trees in Western Kenya. The construction is arduous. The skilled Nyatiti maker spends hours carving it out. The resonator is made to resemble the hearts of a Luo village and are then covered in leather skin. So he buys the skin when it's dry and then he has to, to soak it to soften it so that it can be easy for, for installation in the Then two arms and the head is attached. An opening is cut into the back of the resonator, allowing for sound to be projected outward. The strings are then looped around through the instrument over papyrus attached with beeswax. Today, the best Nyatiti makers still live in the villages. For us to have a mass production of Nyatiti, we need to have a mass production of people going back there and living with those people and knowing exactly why they were making these instruments. Of course, the true heart of the Nyatiti lies in the uniqueness of its sound. Nyatiti has five notes. It's a pentatonic scale um, uh, instrument. One, two, three, four, five. Even one string. That one note is a song. That's all I need. I've got five. So if I can write a song on one string, what can I do with five? Meet William, one of the oldest players we met, buying his first nyatiti for eight shillings in 1951. The nyatiti is traditionally played like this, by a man sat down with percussion being drummed out by the foot, on which he wears a series of bells called a gara. This thing over here is like a drum set. This is like a snare. And the jiggle is like a kashika. So, you see, they were so wise to create something like that. One person, you, you carry like the old band. 't the Nyatiti was an essential part of Luo life. Nyatiti was part of the daily life of the people. The Nyatiti even held a spiritual significance within the village. The witch doctors of the Luo, most of them have the Nyatiti. Sometimes they could play to foretell what, would, what is happening in the society. And so, the traditional Nyatiti style is inextricably linked to the Luo life. So, uh, to play traditionally, you cannot cross boundaries because that music is dedicated to a certain sect of people. They understand from say, 
to understand the lands I'm talking about. To understand the instrument, you must live in the area. Because of this rich traditional heritage, many contemporary players have found resistance when trying to transform the style of music. At some point, I started like also to show my teacher, oh, this is how I'm doing. No, 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 that, was not, that wasn't allowed. It was a big fight. You cannot do that. I've never taught you that. And I guess that old man was right because he, need, he wanted me to, to, to have a foundation to learn the rules before I break the rules. But to thrive in the contemporary market, sometimes the rules have to be broken. And that is what has created my music, because of survival, not because I'm a great musician. Shifts in the Nyatiti's time have led to great innovations. Going back to the roots, uh, to me, that's important because um, that's where I get my ideas, my style of music. You can actually play Nyatiti and rap, or play Nyatiti and do reggae. But it's not like you're just going to do hip-hop in the Nyatiti. You first have to learn the Nyatiti music, how it goes. You know, then you know how to make your hip-hop within the Nyatiti. It shifted your mind. So your hip-hop is coming from the Nyatiti into the hip-hop, not hip-hop into the Nyatiti. So that is very important. Some of the biggest shifts are not in how the music is played, but rather in who gets to play it. Anyango is not only the first female Nyatiti player, but she isn't even African. She reportedly discovered the instrument at a music festival. I saw many kinds of Kenyan traditional music. One of them, it was Nyatiti. I got very shocked and surprised. What? What is this instrument? Very unique and this sound, it really touched me. So I was, I was fall in love with the Nyatiti kind of. And so when Yango got in touch with Okumu Korengo, the would-be teacher. <laughs> to prove her seriousness, she had to live with him in his homestead for months. I had to learn duo language. And sometimes I got malaria. Only after proving her complete commitment and respect was she trained. I had to go to every morning to fetch the water, gathering firewood. But I didn't have feeling of want to give up. Maybe because of the spirit of Nyatiti. She developed her own style and brought Nyatiti to an international audience. But this association of the instrument away from the Luo was not met with universal approval. I respect her. She did work. She learned. But why did he not teach Kenyan women first? Still, Anyango is credited with opening the floodgate for female Nyatiti players. They used to say that women are not that supposed to touch any traditional instrument. For me, I don't think it's a taboo. It's selfishness. They, they want to take all the good things with them. We can see the Nyatiti evolve with Kenya, but for this evolution to continue, the most important focus needs to be the next generation. The small guys in school, there are some who don't know, they've never even seen the instrument. The problem is that traditionally, older players never had formal teachers. Instead, they would imitate their fathers or uncles in the village. They never have like formal uh, sitting, you know. There was no one time they sat down with his father and, okay, this is how you play. No way. So for those outside the villages, it's difficult to find a way to learn. You can't learn someone's culture in, in three months, in two months. You need to live with them there and, and, and know exactly what is happening. This is why Rapasa has teamed up with Fezi Mawuncho to teach the next generation. They come here, they learn, kind of like a nurturing place, like a womb, like a hub. We feel that it's an important part of our culture, but it's also an important part of our education. What you see on TV, for example, is the piano or the guitar. And, and the kids, for example, they will only imitate what they see every day. Our government has not been very keen on uh, 
emphasizing the arts, particularly in recent years. And when kids are learning instruments, it's always with an emphasis on, on the West. I think it's because we live in the 21st century, but we feel that being Africans, our instruments and our culture have something to offer the rest of the world. You got it? It's the most interesting instrument I've like been learning how to play and yeah, I, I like it a lot. Like the first time I ever saw it was um, from a lady and generally that's not like what's done so I thought that was cool because I had, I had some knowledge that like this was a man instrument and so that the fact that she was playing it was no. interesting. Can you play this fast and then you play this now? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Again? You have seen some of the children that have been singing. There's about 40 of them that come here on a regular basis, once a week. And uh, we work together in training the children, specifically in our traditional sounds and our traditional instruments. Yatitik will always be Yatitik. Play it like it is. It is up to you to make it sound different. Because of the interest I see in Kenya today, the, the youth, the young people are coming up to play. The Nyatiti would last a million years to come. Keluru do kedala, 